All right, today, a new video. A new video about inverters. After a uh, very long break, um, things have changed. I've got a new project I'm working on here. Um, I've got a uh, image stabilized lens on this camera, and I'm testing it out to see how it how it does. You'll have to let me know if it's any good at all. <clears throat> but uh, today is, is about 48 volt inverters. As you can see, I've uh, gone and got a few of them now. Um, most of them made in China, basically, and um, some things to know uh, and things learned. I have a, a, a 48 volt system I've converted. Uh, this was a 12 volt travel trailer, as usually they are. There's still 12 volt parts on it, um, but it um, <coughs> it's now a 48 volt uh, system that runs everything. Uh, of course, we have an inverter for 110, and then we have a, a, a buck converter for the 12 volts. Um, here, I'm just going to open this container here, because this is where all the magic happens. I uh, got it open, and uh, the other thing to note is that it is a, a cloudy day, and I'm at an airport, so I'm, I'm going to have to do this video as best I can, and um, forgive some of the noises. Um, but what we have here is we have <laughs> what is what is going on. I'll make a video about this, uh, hopefully... Uh, later on, but uh, we have the 48 volt pack here. It's made out of um, standard 18650 cells, a bunch of MPP charge controllers, and of course another 48 volt inverter, which is what's going to uh, run the system. I also have a uh, uh, 48 volt to 12 volt converter there. Um, so that's sort of the uh, basic lay of the land. <clears throat> as we talk about which inverter I'm going to use. Uh, sorry, I've got a distraction. All right, uh, where was I? All right, 48 volt inverters. Um, so I've um, bought a couple of them now, as you can see. Um, one or so I'm gonna probably be returning to Amazon because it's just not gonna fit the bill. Um, and uh, just in case, you know, either you recognize or you, uh, <coughs> do know that a system like this, a 48 volt system or even 128 volt system, uh, can and uh, will hurt you. So this started off as uh, many, about a year ago, I bought this uh, Phoenix um, from Victron and that's the uh, company and the inverters that I like. Um, this is, um, I'm pretty sure, uh, someone can probably correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure this is a, uh, what they call a uh, low frequency inverter and the rest of them are high frequency inverters. Um, you can generally tell that by how much copper is in them. They have one huge giant inductor in them and not much else, and they're probably a low-frequency inverter. The high-frequency inverters have a bunch of smaller, more sophisticated bits in them. <clears throat> um, there's pros and cons to each. Um, I, I might get into that a little later. But um, uh, I, I bought this essentially because I have a 52-volt uh, uh, electric bike and I have a bunch of batteries for it, and it'd be nice to have just something to run my computer and things like that in case of uh, power outage. So I bought this first, and I wanted to try out one of their products. I'm pretty happy with it. But when I got this thing uh, several months later, it wasn't going to power that. So I tried to get one uh, Victron that was bigger, but they don't sell anything bigger that's not a split phase that would work in my um, setup. And split phase... Uh, basically means you're running a, a, a 220 or 240 volt system uh, essentially instead of a 110 and my trailer is a 110 and um, so the split phase wasn't going to work. They make bigger ones that are better but when you get up to the amperage and wattage I wanted they, they go to split phase. So the next thing I found that was a reputable brand that I, uh, that I trust is this Ames. Um, they're supposedly out of uh, Phoenix or uh, Arizona or uh, uh, you might have to correct me on that, but uh, sort of U.S. based, and uh, I like to try to figure out um, how 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 their inverters work. And it, this, you know, fifteen hundred watts was uh, kind of on the very edge of what I thought I would need. You know, running my microwave and such like that. It turns out it can't do it. It uh, sort of can, sort of can't, and so I was left trying to find something else that was reasonable. And so I, I bought this black one. Um, 
immediately after opening the box, I had some very deep suspicions, which I'll get into in a minute, of why this is not what it claims to be. And uh, then, of course, I immediately then said, well, I need something that works, so I'll go ahead and I'll buy another one. So I bought this one. Um, both of these inverters seem to have pretty good documentation and fairly decent reviews on Amazon, Scamazon. But uh, this one seems to be worse in almost every way. It's got a more sophisticated panel on it. It tells you more information, but uh, I don't necessarily believe it. And it's, it's not necessary for me in my... I'm never going to be looking at the inverter. Uh, it's going to be in there, so it's, it's useless to me. Uh, what all these inverters have in common that was a requirement is a remote, 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 um, uh, on and off, because I, I didn't want to be climbing outside the, the, the uh, camper trailer to uh, turn these things on and off all the time. So um, that's, that's sort of how, how, I, how I got here. Now, um, what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to take all of these apart and show you what they look like on the inside and tell you some of my thoughts and theories on what's going on here and why, uh, obviously, um, these two for sure lie to you. And I, I believe even the Ames is essentially a, probably a Chinese inverter that they've slapped their name on it that's uh, essentially doing the same lie. And it's kind of disappointing, um, although it, it's not all bad. It's not all bad. Not to say that they don't work, because they do work. Um, this is the only one I haven't actually plugged in yet. Maybe we will. Uh, maybe we won't. But uh, here, here is what there is uh, to know. All right, the uh, first uh, inverter on the bench is the uh, Phoenix, uh, Victron Energy Phoenix. And uh, I'll see if I can get you the label on the back. But it's uh, designed in the Netherlands, Europe, made in India. So it's the first one on the uh, on the bench, and it's pretty easy to take apart. I've had this apart before, but uh, it's uh, surprisingly simple. Well, uh, this does have a companion Bluetooth uh, thing that tells you a bit more about it and lets you set it up and dial in the the your hertz, you know, whether you're 50 or 60 hertz, and uh, it gives you a little voltage adjustment too. It's kind of nice. It tells you how loaded the uh, inverter is. Um, doesn't tell you exactly how much power you're using, but it does tell you how much load it's under. Um, I suppose we'll just speed up this part. <clears throat> well, again, I'm just going to have to apologize for some background noise, but here we have uh, something we're not going to see in much of the other inverters. And this is how you can tell if it's uh, probably a low-frequency inverter or not. Is there's a huge inductor and a ton amount of uh, copper in it. It's very, very heavy. Um, it's a very, very sophisticated and uh, there's not much cooling on it. And it's uh, pretty, pretty, uh, pretty basic. Um, again, uh, there's some capacitors and stuff in these. Uh, probably not so much this one as some of the others. That'll give you a hell of a kick. Um, so. Uh, Careful where you're sticking your nose. Um, there's not really a whole lot to point out here. Um, uh, simple in some aspects compared to the other uh, um, inverters. And this is probably so expensive just by the sheer amount of copper um, that's required to put it together. Anyways, um, we'll move on to the next inverter. Um, I might refer back to this one. All right, the next one on the bench is this, uh, it says CS We Wind, I don't know how to pronounce it, I'm not even going to bother, but I do tell you that I think the uh, company on the Amazon said it was a, go to my order history here real quick, scroll back a ways, it's a XIJIA, Xija, I'm not going to pronounce that either, but you know, you get one name and it comes another, so you see this pretty commonly on Amazon these days. Uh, this one came apart really easy. The reason why I've got two of them is because the first one, uh, as I pulled it out of the box, this lid was about ready to fall off because they stripped all the uh, screws out of the casing, and so that was the number one reason why I was going to return it. Um, I immediately get another one. 
So, but the one with the uh, stripped out screws is the one I've been using, and I've been hitting it with uh, vacuum cleaners and microwaves and chop saws and drill presses and table saws and all that kind of stuff to see if I can get it to uh, fail or blow up. Luckily, it uh, has survived all of that. It's been about a month of me being pretty brutal with it, um, mostly really trying to actually honestly destroy it because uh, I, I don't believe what it says here on the label. Okay, here we go. All right, I've got this thing apart now. Um, zoom in just a little bit. Uh, so a couple of things to note about this design. Things I, I like and things I don't like. Things I like is we've got uh, big giant heat sinks plus we also have on the sides in the back, I don't know if you can, you can't really see it because of the heat sink, but they've actually got um, MOSFETs and other, other cooling attached to the casing too. But uh, I like that the fan, the fan here on the, uh, the back side is uh, blowing directly uh, through or into the, the heat sink. And we've got another one here that's in the path of the fan. So all this stuff is in the path of the fan. So it looks like we have proper cooling. We have temperature sensor. Uh, things I don't like is it doesn't look like there's a proper isolation between the high voltage and the low voltage size. I see things in the middle here that look like they can be optocouplers, but generally you'll see a break in the PCB or they'll cut a hole all the way through the PCB so that there's there's no there's nothing between the high and the low side um, to isolate them. Um, it um, just uh, it's better and safer that way. Generally, you can look up as to all the different reasons why. Um, I know a ton about electronics, but uh, there's uh, a lot more people out there that know far more than me. Um, but the other thing to note is that there is uh, ten of these 10 amp fuses in here. And you see the same circuit basically um, redone five times. And this is probably, these are all set up in parallel probably. Uh, and each one of these is doing a little bit of the uh, stepping up or the conversion and stuff like that. And you can see that the power for the positive goes directly into each one of these things. So these are on the, uh, well, these, these fuses are directly on the uh, lower voltage side. And the interesting thing to know um, so this is a 6,000 watt, this is a 6,000 watt inverter peak, but if you have 10 10 amp fuses, um, so 10 10 amp fuses, so it's 100, right, just 10 times 10 is 100, and then you, you times that by 48, because it's a 48 volt inverter, you get 4,800 watts about before these fuses blow. So. Uh, I'm sure these, these fuses won't blow instantaneously, even though they're an automotive style fuse that blows pretty quickly. So they, they, they probably will let you put out some power above 4,800 watts before they blow, but not very long. They should, they should blow pretty quickly when you're over 1,000 watts, significantly over their, um, their rating. And the other thing to note is these are automotive style fuses, and most automotive style fuses are generally rated up to 32 volts, and this is on the uh, low side. So this is the 4850, and you can see about 56 volts. I think a lot of that's reasons why uh, fuses like this aren't rated higher voltage is because uh, they don't have any um, arc extinguishing capability in them. Um, you, the, the metal and everything can blow and evaporate in the middle, but the arc can still pass from one side, from one leg, of the fuse to the other because there's still an arc there. There's nothing to extinguish them. Some people, will, I've even seen people drill into these things and add sand into the automotive fuses to give them some sort of arc extinguishing capability in an automotive style fuse. So I, I don't know if that's correct, if that's what you kind of fuse and kind of thing you want to do. And the fact that each one of them is, is done up like this with 10 fuses, uh, they give you a pack of 10 fuses extra in the box, but I'm willing to bet that any failure mode, which involves blowing all 10 of these fuses, it's probably a failure mode which this thing is not going to recover from, so swapping out all those fuses are probably not going to do you much good. Uh, that's just my suspicion. Um, uh, so as, as the behavior of this thing, which is kind of nice and kind of bad, and this high frequency inverter, um, and probably how they're getting the 6000 watt 
the 6,000 watt number out of this or whatever is they're fudging things a little bit. And I don't even think this is true 3,000 watts. I think if you ran this thing at 3,000 watts continuously, it would suffer. Um, I think it can do it for periods of time. I've hit 3,000 watts um, for short periods of time. But the other thing to note about a 3,000 watt inverter, which, you know, here we go, not really all that safe, is your main out. Yeah, let's see if we got in frame. Hey, focus. Yeah, I think you can focus. Focus enough. Is you got one standard plug, and it's the uh, type that's not even a 20 amp plug. So it's a 15 amp plug. And then you got these tiny little, tiny little um, tie-ins there if you want to plug something bigger, which is difficult to say the least. Um, let's see. It probably says 15 amps. Yeah, it says 15 amps directly on the plug. So we got a 3,000 watt inverter and 15, you know, they could at least put a 20 amp in there, but they, they didn't. You'll notice the, uh, the 20 amps, I don't know if you know this out there, but you'll see the 20 amps. So the 20 amps will have a little, a little sideways blade. This will, the one of them will be straight and the other one will be sideways. And that's how you know it's a, it's a 20 amp. So sometimes you'll see a socket with this and then it has a, a little break in that way. And if you ever see that, that's because supposedly, uh, it should be a 20 amp uh, uh, circuit there, and a 20 amp plug. The uh, let's see. The, the other bit to know is how this thing, uh, how this thing actually works. And the reality is that if you give it a really heavy load, like you start up like a table saw or a vacuum cleaner or something, is the voltage plummets. And it says somewhere in the instructions I read somewhere that it has a um, uh, what are they, a soft start feature. And I think that's what they're calling the soft start feature is that basically the voltage collapses once it sees a big, especially an inductive load like a, uh, a motor, is that the voltage just collapses. And that, uh, it can go all the way down to like 50 volts and then it'll start bringing it back up. And as the, uh, you're, you're controlling the, the motor's um, power draw for the first startup phase by, by doing that. I'm not sure if it's intentional or a side effect but it has the effect of, of having sort of kind of like a soft start feature in it. Good news is, is if you're just running heavy duty equipment or power tools on it, as long as this thing can keep on putting up and putting up. Remember, because everything's up in parallel like this, uh, especially when you get this thing loaded really, really up to its maximum capacity, uh, whatever the weakest component in this chain here fails, is you're going to have a cascading failure. Um, so uh, where I was at? Oh yeah, so it's only as strong as its weakest component. So just like the radio tower in Puerto Rico, Arca Arcapello, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, once you have a failure of a component, it's going to load the other components higher and higher, and they're going to fail faster and faster until you have this uh, catastrophic collapse of the whole system. That's probably how this inverter will die if it's pushed too hard. Now, hopefully you have fuses and circuitry and everything in here to monitor itself and shut itself down before that happens. I've tried to push it harder, but um, because of the options here on the front of the inverter, it makes me, yeah, getting up to 3000 watts out of this inverter, the way we've got the plug-ins and the taps in here, it just, the extra, the cable in here, it just doesn't make me feel really, really great. So I, again, probably a pretty good inverter so so long as you don't really want 3000 watts out of it if you want 3000 watts out of an inverter you're probably going to have to go to a split phase or something that has multiple uh, tap ins or, or, or something like that or multiple breakers or circuits or, or something to, to make this uh, safe but i don't ever plan to use this thing really above 1500 watts it might peak to 2000 watts every once in a while while starting up something and uh, that's basically what I want, and so this inverter will probably do that for me. But one of the other downsides of an inverter like this is that it dropping its voltage when it sees a load, a heavy load, uh, especially an inductive load, is that the voltage drops. If you have a bunch of other things attached to this inverter, like computers and sensitive electronics, which I have because all my electronics and everything's powered by this one inverter, is, is um, you're hitting those with um, those lower dips and spikes and stuff of voltage. And those can be damaging to your other electronics. So if you have just a dumb motor with a switch, AC motor, a dumb motor plugging the switch, this sort of soft start, whatever they're calling soft start in here, 
probably works okay, but you don't want to have a lot of other components or a lot of other electronics uh, attached to it while you're doing that. It's probably not good. It's a not good situation. So we have a multiple things here about this inverter that, that, question, that makes me question uh, a lot of aspects of its design and how it's uh, presented and labeled and advertised. And they even have like CE and FCC little stickers and stuff on it here like that. And I, you know, I, I'm willing to bet that's a bunch of bullshit. So this is actually the inverter I'm, I'm going to choose to use because it essentially works for my purpose. But I'm actually going to use both of these inverters, the v v Victron and this. The Victron will be running, uh, I'll have a separate circuit um, directly plugged into this essentially running my sensitive electronics on the Victron and this will be on a separate uh, circuit. So when I start up a microwave or a vacuum cleaner or a power tool on this circuit, I got rudely interrupted by a spam caller, the seventh one today. Uh, so basically I have two inverters, uh, a lower inverter for my sensitive electronics and my bigger inverter for everything else. And that's sort of the system I've uh, discovered. And that's probably the cheapest option because a lot of the other options out there are very, very expensive. You can spend thousands of dollars on an inverter to get a proper one from Vic Victron or uh, Ames even makes some some higher end stuff and stuff like that. But if you want to keep it low, you can, and it'll probably work for a good long time. But you got to know what the limitations and w what are the caveats. What are you getting? What are you buying here? And it's a it's a odd ball of things that makes me kind of frustrated because you know this this basically should come with a whole bunch of warning labels all over it saying I don't know mostly that you're a sucker and you bought the thing. So uh, let's take apart the, uh, the next and put this inverter back together and take apart the next inverter and show you what the difference is and probably, pretty much why I'm uh, this orange inverter over here, I, I'm really not even gonna bother with because it's, it's, it's built similarly, but worse. So I, I just don't even wanna plug it in because you know, even if it does work, why, why, why bother? So let's let's go on to to the next inverter. All right, the orange inverter, and as I just drug it across my truck here, um, it's already falling apart. So we know we got good quality right off the bat. And this one is significantly heavier than the other one, the other three thousand watt inverter. Um, and oh look, it's already missing another. Well, yeah, well, pardon me, but it's already missing another uh, uh, foot, so whatever. This thing also has a, uh, the way this thing's put together so that everything is held on by these these things and the, the, the screws are pulling out of the case again on, I don't know if you can see this, but these screws are barely holding on and pulling out of the case. I've already, uh, just by pulling on this, I managed to rip one of these screws completely out of its socket. So this is what you're bolting this thing down with and it's just, <laughs> it's falling apart right out of the box. I haven't plugged it in. So you see why I just not super interested in this inverter. One of the complaints on Amazon about this inverter before I bought it was I saw that they used a bunch of uh, hot glue all over the place to hot glue all the components in the place, the, the screen and the switches and whatnot, and people thought that was pretty chintzy. I'm not going to gripe about that too much. It's not my favorite way of doing things in the world, but eh, not too bad. Here we see uh, <clears throat> sort of the same setup as the other one. We see five of these coils with 10 amp fuses, so it's set up almost identically to the other one in a lot of ways. We have uh, a soldered on board hack here. I don't know if you can in focus or in frame here, but there is some sort of component here and it didn't work. And so they had to come up with another like daughter or secondary board and heat shrink it and glue it down. And it's kind of just flapping in the breeze here. Not very good. Uh, notice whatever the heck this outside aluminum is, it's not doing contributing at all to the um, cooling of all these MOSFETs and diodes we have here. Probably MOSFETs, 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 and these are probably diodes up here, just by the way they look at them. Um, go ahead, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, 
we again we don't see any isolation the board looks I see mistakes solder mistakes and a lot of goop and glob and of course all this is all well it's all bridged together with solder and hot glue and worst to worst is we got the fans here but then we have these heat sinks and everything tucked over to the side and significantly smaller so they're out of the path of the airflow but they did attach littler heat sinks to the front so those are kind of catching the airflow and all the ventilation as you can see when it's puts in is drawn in from the bottom and then pulled the way through the back which is okay as long as you have the feet standing you off the ground and give you an air gap there so that all the air can come in and pass through so there's and but obviously these have already fallen off so there's just so many things wrong with what's going on here we still have the same sort of really thin gauge wire to 15 inch plugs we do have a, a bigger taps on the front with a bigger cable but it's just all balled together in this mess here of heat shrink and i don't know what they've done but that's not the way i would do it uh, there is some heavier gauge wire going to these taps in the front so that's obviously the way you would you would you would you go about this one to get the 3000 watts out of it if you were to convinced you wanted to try but again you have the same 10 amp fuses so you get the 14,800 watts before these fuses should blow I don't I don't I don't know what to say but other than uh, it looks a lot like the first one, except for worse, in construction, construction wise. And I, I just, you know, I, I, I'll just pay, take the first one. Especially this is heavier. Why heavier? Uh, and and it's the coming apart. Hey. Just going right back in the box and right back to Amazon. There's just not even worth plugging this one in. And if you have seen this one and you have used it and it works for you, you know. It could work. There's nothing here that says this won't work or this can't work. It just has a whole bunch going on with it. That doesn't make me think that it's my best option, especially since I saw the other one, didn't like that one, bought this one hoping it was better than this one, seeing it's worse and going back to the original and saying, hey, you know what, actually that was looking like a pretty good deal considering what we got here. Um, the way it's mounted to the, uh, this board is mounted to the well, they got another heat sink underneath this board and it's sort of hot glued and kind of some screws tabbed in. I, I have to pull it all apart to find out what's going on, but the way this board's mounted in here with all this weight and all these aluminum and everything like that, just the whole thing from top to bottom just makes me think that they really didn't care. <laughs> Honestly, they're just like, yeah. They don't care. They won't know. It'll blow up in three months in this fly-by-night company called, I don't know, I didn't even bother with the name of this one. I'll look it up later and I'll add it into the description. We have a plane interrupting us. So I'll pause. All right, here we've got the Ames. It's the last and final. Uh, no idea where this was actually manufactured. So, uh, I don't see any indication of marking anywhere, but I do see proper California markings and stuff like that. You know, Californians are allergic to everything. Uh, please keep us in our little snowflake bubble. Uh, and do not remove. Careful. Don't remove the sticker. You'll, you'll face the uh, sticker police. So I like this inverter. Um, this inverter says a 1500 watt inverter, not 3000, so it's half the capacity but only about a little smaller uh, plus or minus 200 watts aim says and that's probably because there's a, a thing between inverters a lot of the cheaper inverters are uh, rated by wattage but the Victron and other higher-end companies will actually rate their uh, inverters by uh, VA or volt amps and I'd say I have to not be able to give an adequate description of what volt amps is here on video right off the spot. I'll have to look it up myself. But essentially, volt amps is taking into consideration what they call the, the power factor. Um, most uh, AC circuits have a power, all AC circuits have a power factor. And, and you want to keep the power factor as close to one as possible. It means that 
when you have an AC uh, sine wave going and you have a load, that load, that usually an inductive load, isn't fighting the sine wave and pushing it further back and bringing it out of phase. If the AC goes too far out of phase, bad things goes happens. Uh, and so the volt amps is calculating, uh, is, is accommodating and giving you an idea of uh, how much Again, I apologize for Lowe's droning in the background. We have someone just circling the airfield forever, so I've given up. He's going to land or do whatever. So, uh, power factor. So VA is basically taking in consideration the, the power factor component, because the, the, the further off from 1, it's basically a rating from 1 to 0. And the, the further away you get from a, a, a perfect power factor, the less watts an inverter can actually out, out, output. If the, the, if the power factor is, is if the power factor is, is way off, then the amount of actual real power available also goes down. Um, so your, your, your overall watts will decline with how, how far off the power factor is. And how far off the power factor is, is basically what kind of load you have on the system. If you have something like an electric toaster or something on it that's just purely resistive, it's going to have a perfect power factor and you're going to get the maximum 500 or so watts out of this thing, out of uh, Vic, this, this Phoenix over here, the uh, Victron. Because it's rated in 500, that's 500 VA, not 500 watts. But if you had a big heavy motor on it, you might only get 3 or even 250 uh, watts out of it because that motor has got this high inductive load to it that the inverter has to fight. And then it goes to another difference between a, a high frequency inverter and a low frequency inverter. As lower frequency inverters, because they have a giant piece of copper in them, you can think of that as a, a bunch of mass or an, an inertia basically to the electrons. And so they're able to fight uh, these power factors, these bad power factor situations better than high frequency inverters. They generally take that kind of abuse far better than a high frequency inverter because they've got all that inertia basically behind them. Uh, again, in the comments, you can uh, tell me how I'm wrong. Uh, what we see here is we see these, uh, um, these coils here, which are set up very much like the Chinese. We have three of them instead of five, probably the 1500 watt versus the 3000. Notice that there's three, and those one had five. It seems like you would have six. The other thing to note is these things are rated at 500. There's this 500 rating on them. And the other one, they had a 3200 rating each on them. I suspect what they did, the Chinese being clever, is they added a zero. So each one of those uh, coils was probably only 320. And I'm going to say that those are watts or VA, probably VA, but we'll, we'll call it watts. People have a hard time understanding how much uh, something's going to consume in watts. Sometimes amps will work better for them, but when you're talking about a 48 volt system, you're not going to find many things that run directly off of 48 volts, so you got to talk watts. But anyways, you see 500, 500, 500, you add those together and you get 1500, 1500 pretty easily. If you add 5 times uh, 320, you get 1620 or so. Well, you do the math. It's a 16, just north of 1600 uh, watts. And I suspect that's probably the true capacity, the true rating of the uh, other inverters. It's just they decided with their labels to just be, you know, add an extra zero and nobody will know. So the thing we like about this inverter is it's using the case very heavily for its cooling. Um, it's pulling air all the way through it. Um, so if this case gets hot, you know the inverter is hot. So um, this has to, the whole case, not just the inside, but the outside needs to have good flow through it, which is not much of a problem. The other thing you'll know, this in here, let's see if I can find it, but I see that there's all these cuts. Let me see them. You see that there's there's cuts. Yeah, see I'm pointing down here. There's cuts in the, the circuit board here. You can actually see where they're isolating the high side from the low side. And at some point in time, yes, here, up here, those are, opti those are very clearly optocouplers and some sort of, uh, looks like a maybe a capacitor, maybe a thermistor or, or something. Probably, uh, I have to look it up, but uh, anyways, those are opti optocouplers, and that's the separating the high voltage from the low sub voltage, and they've got these cuts in the board to make sure that those two sides are truly isolated. They've got big diodes all over the place. Um, so, 
this this looks more organized and I don't know where it was made but obviously it was designed probably to a higher standard and the way these plugs are, are put on the front for 1500 watts mind you looks reasonable this looks reasonable everything here looks reasonable I, I can tell you I can't really get 1500 watts out of it without this thing alarming and shutting down most of the time I get about 14 uh, even with something that's really a resistive load. I, I did to put a toaster on it, and I did think I did get the 1500 watts out of it, but it has to be purely a resistive load. Any kind of anything, and this thing just uh, alarms and shuts down. Um, but it shuts down gracefully, and there's no... Uh, and there's been no fuss it just it just you know kicks right back on and continues working again after you remove the load from it the only other thing that i don't understand which maybe somebody can clue me in is we have this just 10 amp automotive fuse situation again and obviously these people have done it as well as everybody else so it must be okay right maybe maybe not but this one's 10 amps, there's two 10 amps, this one's got two 10 amps, and this one's got two 40 amps. I don't know if you can see that there, but that's clearly two 40 amps there. Uh, why would that be so much higher than the others? Uh, I have to ponder that out myself and see if I can't reason that out, why, why that would be. But Anyways, what we see here is we don't have everything securely mounted to the case. Everything's screwed down. There's no vast amounts of glue pulling everything together. Everything's fairly well, you know, secured. We've got I mean, I, I can't really say there's too much to complain about here as far as uh, build quality internally, it just doesn't quite do what I need it to do. I'll keep this inverter. Um, maybe I'll find a home for it or somebody who, who, who needs it. I probably won't use it, but um, it is what it is. Uh, the only thing to note is I paid as much for this Ames inverter as I did for the Chinese inverters. I think this was like 20 bucks cheaper. So there, there's something going on there. Could be just the Ames brand name. You're, you're marking up the value, but there definitely seems like there's, I don't know if the... Um, the build quality seems to be reasonable, and the design seems to be thought out. It might not be perfect, but you know, I, I, you know, you do the do the best you can, and then you put the warning labels on, and you let it be somebody else's problem. All right, so I'm I'm gonna probably close down the video there, just you know, in case you just don't take my word for it, and you actually want to see me do it. If I get a bunch of comments saying, yeah, yeah. Test the inverters. Show, show us, show us them shutting down, or take them to their extreme, and let's see what they can really, truly do. If I get a bunch of interest in that, I'll, I'll do it. But if this video goes nowhere, then I won't bother. Thanks for watching, and if this video was useful, uh, let me know about it in the comments below. Thanks.